Hey everyone, my name is Joe Rahme and you might know me from Lem Geeks. I'm Rahmu from everywhere and I like this U sound a lot. So today I'm going to be talking about Lua. Uh, basically we've heard about a lot of programming languages today. We heard about Ruby, Perl, JavaScript. We made fun of PHP which was, one, which was nice and I want to talk about Lua because it's a very, very cool language uh, that I picked up uh, around a year ago. Started playing with it, fell in love with it, posted a few things on LabGeeks. Some members showed interest. They asked me to share about my experience with, with it. The next thing I know, I'm here with you guys and talking about it. So Lua, uh, well, first thing about this talk, there are two main reasons why you should fa fall in love with Lua. One of them is the simplicity and the elegance of the language itself, and this is what we're going to see. The other thing is how well Lua plays with C code. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time to see that, but feel free to come talk to me after, the, after this presentation and we can share if you're interested. So first thing first, let's take a quick look at some Lua code. Lua, just like any other scripting language, it's dynamic typing. It's uh, uh, imperative, it supports several paradigms, functional programming that we've seen a little bit. Uh, some object-oriented ideas are here. Now, I want you to take a look at this code, but not, don't necessarily try to understand it. Just take a look at it. You can see like, it's pretty standard. If you know any programming, this thing should look very familiar. We have function calls, strings, function definitions. You might notice that blocks are delimited with keywords instead of punctuations like brackets and stuff, uh, inline comments with double dash, multi-line comments, and Lua shares this wonderful mistake with JavaScript that is type coercion whenever you have strings and ints. Basically what I'm really trying to show here is that the syntax should feel very familiar if you ever programmed in any scripting language. So. When learning about a new language, the first thing I ask is what are the primitives of the language? And we have eight. So numbers, they're all floating point, double precision floating point, no ints, but well, strings are strings, nil are, you know, nil, boolean, true, false. Tables, we're going to see them in detail a little bit. Functions are exactly what you expect them to be. User data is any data you would uh, get from C code if you're interacting with C code, which is something we do very often in Lua. And threads are an object by themselves, but I'm not going to cover threads, although Lua has a really, really, really cool way of dealing with them. So the next thing I ask are, what are the means of abstraction? And we've already talked about functions. As you can see in the first, sorry? Exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So the, fir the first thing is a function declaration. Well, notice that line breaks don't matter as much, and you can declare a function like function, the name, the arguments, the, the code, the body of the function, and the end keyword. Notice that in, in Lua, functions are first class values. So what the first line really is, it's just syntactic sugar for an assignment statement with an anonymous function, a lambda. And this is very, very important because this is something we use all the time in Lua anonymous functions everywhere. And we're going to kind of look at it if we can. But before that, let's look at the third point from SICP, which is the means of combination. How do I combine objects to create compound objects? And Lua has a very religious take on it. It's tables, 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 tables. Tables are the only means of combination. So what are tables really? You're probably familiar with the concept. They're called associative arrays. They're called hash maps. They're called dictionaries. They're called so many different things. It's basically a set of key-value pairs. So the syntax is really, is really straightforward. We're using curly braces. You can use you declare the empty table, or you can use names for your values, your key and values. And what is really cool about tables is that they're a little more flexible than your traditional hash maps. So for instance, in the first five tables, I do not declare keys for my values they automatically get the numerical key which comes with their position. And now there's something really weird about Lua. We start with in the index 1. It sounds weird to programmers. Non-programmers find it very normal. 
ultimately, it's not a problem because Lua is flexible enough to interact with zero-based areas without any problem. And what is even cooler are mixed tables. Mixed tables tell you that it only assigns numerical indexes to values which do not declare their keys. So if you take a closer look at mixed table, the first element, which is the table, has the key 1. Second element, 5, has the key 2. And the third element has the key verbose, not the key 3. So if I access the third element of mixed table, I'll get nil. Inside, Lua, Lua has optimized the thing. Tables have separate, have separate containers for arrays and hash tables. But these are implementation details. You do not usually care too much about it. Now, what is the religion thing about Lua is that we're convinced that this is all we need to create all sorts of data structures. I mean, you can already see we have an array here, but we can do so much more. Like, for instance, a set is super easy to implement, having a table, if you use keys to hold your values. By definition, your keys are unique. And this is exactly what is done here. If I'm in a certain element, I just put the key to true. If I want to remove it, I put it to nil. And if I want to check if it's there, I just check if it's true. This is super simple. You can go super far. A linked list can be implemented that way. Super easy. A tree can be implemented that way as well. Tables are flexible enough to give you all you need. This is kind of the bet we're doing when no other language I know of has taken that approach. Except maybe for awk, but who knows awk. <laughs> Another thing, okay, one great thing about Lua is that it has lexical scoping. Lexical, lexical scoping means, it's a big thing, but it basically means that a variable can live inside of a function and nowhere else. Which allows us to create closures. Who's familiar with closures? Okay, so here you can see what a closure really is. Look at the, the function declaration. The function declares a local integer i, then returns an anonymous function which modifies i. Now we come to instantiation of, that, of this function. When C1 instantiates a new function, it has its own copy of i that only the function can access. There is no way or outside layers to access that function. Every time I call it C1 parenthesis, i is incremented. Now if I instantiated this with C2, I'll get a new counter and a new value of i. This is called a closure over i. And i increments every time I call C2. Notice that C1 has a, its own value of i that is completely independent from C2. The basic closures, just know that they're extremely used. <coughs> now, what are the real strengths of Lua? The main strength, and what I really love about that language, is how lightweight it is. I did a small comparison with Python. I got the source code for both and run a WC to see the lines of code of the source code. Look at the difference. One of them is 600,000 lines of code, the other is 20,000. I compiled it. The size of the executable is super different. Lua runs at 220 kilobytes. This is extremely light. This, is, this means you can embed it everywhere. Even compile time is just it's uncomparable. The reason why is mainly that Lua does not ship a big library like Python does. It's super, super simple, and we're going to talk about this. But before that, another other strength of Lua is that it's blazing fast. It has a great C API, which deserves a whole talk on its own. It's super portable because it's written in NCC, which means it compiles everywhere. And it's super simple. If you like, who here knows about Scheme? Okay, Scheme is this wonderful language that has absolutely nothing but is insanely powerful. Lua has a lot of similarities with it. And the weaknesses of Lua, what are the downsides? It does not ship a very important library. It has a math library, I.O., and that's about it, like uh, interacting with the OS. But because it was never meant to be uh, something meant for standalone applications. Ex exactly the same for runtime checks, exception handlings, etc., etc., etc. A lot of things go in Lua. Because Lua was always meant to be this glue that will get all your C components that you compiled yourself together to create something bigger. Uh, but last, before I finish, I, I hope I got you interested about Lua. Lua has another thing that it's really, really well documented. The author of the language 
Roberto Yerusal something, <laughs> publishes a book every time he releases a new version of Lua, which is absolutely amazing. If you, even if you're not a programmer, it's a great way to start programming. And the cool thing is that every time he releases a new book, well, the last one becomes free online, so you should definitely check it. Most of it is still, uh, is still relevant. Finally, who know, awesome is this window manager program on Linux that you should definitely check out. It was what introduced me to Lua, and it's scriptable in Lua, and on the wiki, it has this great page that is called the briefest introduction to Lua, and it's great to look up the syntax when you're learning. So that's about it. I hope you, I got you at least interested to check it out. And if you have any questions, feel, feel, feel free to call me.